So let's take a look at how we created these water trails. We have a ship. The ship here is what we're using in the video. Then we have the wakes, so the, the effect of creating these uh, water trails. And lastly, we have the material function for creating these waves. So let's just first cover the uh, material function. This is from the ocean project. Um, you can find it on GitHub, and I will leave that in the description as well. So the um, ocean project is using Gaussian waves to create the effect of waves. <clears throat> um, so what they're doing is they're computing the same waves that we are using in the ocean. And these are uh, put into a height map. The height map is then used to displace the, uh, the texture, the wave texture we're having here, or the wave texture. The wave texture is looking a little bit like this. You can see using texture coordinates or, or absolute positions. So um, they will never overlap in a way um, when spawned. They always look the same. Um, but I have not changed anything in this uh, material function. So if you're going to use the same, then just go into and download the Ocean project for the material function here. So where the real magic is happening is within the ship. The ship is um, controlling when to spawn new waves or when to spawn new these wakes and where to spawn them. In our case, we have three emitters. So each emitter are creating these waves. We have one in the right, left, and the middle. If we go into the um, event graph here. So what we're taking looking at here first, we're checking the last position we were at, and we're doing that each tick. This is only used uh, down in this if this branch. We're just checking are we moving. If we're moving, then we are allowed to spawn these waves or wake. Um, next, we're checking here, and we're checking if we have moved a certain distance from the last time we spawned a wake. So we are. Um, each time we're spawning awake, we are saving the location within the last spawn position. Okay, so if we are uh, satisfying all these constraints, then we are starting to spawn these uh, these wakes blueprints. We are spawning for each right, left, and the middle. And when spawning, we are giving in a direction for uh, which the uh, wakes are going to move when spawned. Uh, I can reveal now that this is the uh, x direction. So for the right emitter, we want the to move minus uh, local x direction. So when I say minus local x direction, I mean if we have the here, we have the local local direction. So minus x would be to the right and plus x would be to the left. Um, and zero would just be stay where you are. So oops, what we're doing here is um, moving the wakes using the move direction. Um, yeah, that pretty much cover the, the boat and how or when we are spawning the wakes. <clears throat> Sorry. So first of all, when we are constructing, um, when you're constructing this, we are creating a dynamic material instance because the material instance is what we are um, using here, the wake. And then we're just setting the lifetime to be forever. When you're first getting this from the ocean project, this will be only 15 seconds, but we want it to be um, being there for, for longer time because our ships are so slow. So to take effect, we're going to set the lime time to forever. And then in the event graph, we are going to delete it when it's not needed anymore. So in the event graph, we have a sequence of actions we're going to do. First of all, we're going to uh, set the opacity. When the um, wake is spawned, 
we want it to be very visible because it's very close to the ship and it's very um, it should be very visible here. And then as time goes on, we are using the the delta second here, and then how much we should decrease each time. Then we're decreasing the opacity over time here. So instead of using the 15 seconds, we're using the decrease time to actually um, indicate how long this pool would be before deleting it. Next thing is the radius. The radius is um, the circle we have in spawning. So it's starting to be a very small circle. And then we're, um, while adding it up, uh, it's just telling us how much of the plane should be uh, visible or how much of the texture should be visible on the plane we're having. Um, the radius is, is is taking into account the opacity, so it's starting as a small radius, and then um, we're telling it to well have an end size. The end size uh, is going to be large, so when the wake is almost uh, spawning out because of the opacity, then it should have the end radius times the scale, because when we're scaling and not uh, adding up the radius, uh, you don't see any effect of scaling. So we are adding the scaling uh, effect as well here. And then the star, uh, the star size of the, uh, of the wake here. Then we are going to look at the scale. We're just uh, having an end scale and a start scale. And then we're letting opacity uh, slowly uh, generate from from the start to end scale. Then we were talking about moving the wakes. So we're using the move direction here, finding the x um, x direction, so this direction, um, and then times, uh, then multiplying this with the move direction, and we are having a speed. The speed is depends on the boat and how fast it should be. I have just uh, a constant here. But if we are moving faster, the waves should be uh, increasing faster. So the moving speed should also be um, somewhat uh, higher. But in my case, we're just using a, a constant. Um, and then we're just moving, setting the actual location um, based on this. And lastly, we have if we are going to, if it's invisible, so the opacity is, oh, should be zero here. If it's zero, then uh, we just destroy the actor. So this giving us the effect of having water trail. If you can see here. It's moving very slow. It's a big ship. Let me just, I'm going to, allowing us to see here. We can see that it's scaling, but the radius is still very small. And the radius here is just increasing um, as the opacity goes down. So one thing to notice here, that is the waves are very jiggery. It's because of the poly spline mesh we're using. Um, it can leave some very, uh, Bad artifacts. It's not so bad here, but um, to change this, if you're going to have very close images of uh, the wakes or the waves here, the water trails, uh, I re recommend changing these uh, to a higher uh, poly spline. So what I did was I was taking the uh, the standard wake spline and I exported it and put it into the um, into Blender. And then you can always just making higher scale by adding up the, um, you can subdivide it. So you can see here, then we just subdivide each section until you have the, the effect you want here. And then you can uh, put this into the game engine again. Let me just see here. Then I have, I have done this and this is my extreme poly. So if we are taking an example here, this is jiggery. What if I'm going in and putting the stream, say wake spline stream, you can see here it's going to be very smooth or a 
at least smoother than before. Um, so yes, I think this covers how we did it. Okay. 